Hi guys, um, so what I'm going to do today is just a little tutorial on how I do my backgrounds with my Neo 2s, um, with the Neo 1s over the top to create like a really nice smooth um, background. I had a request on one of my pictures that I uploaded to Facebook, so I'm going to do that for you guys tonight. Um, so basically I've gone ahead and pulled out my three purple tones from my Neo 2s um, and once I've done my Neo 2s I'll go back in with my Neo 1s which I'll show you. Okay, so I'm doing a bit of a purple theme on the Baba Yaga. Um, so I'm just going to pick some little spots to do for you guys. Now, something I found with the Neos is you can sharpen them to get obviously into these finer points, uh, which I do like to do. And you can keep the shavings to use um, as obviously paint if you want, which is what I do sometimes. So, all right, I'm just going to pull off that first layer. So it doesn't go in my shavings. Okay. Now, I'm just I'm literally just going to give it a really quick sharp and I don't want it to be too pointy, just enough to get a bit of a finer point so I can get in those spaces. Okay. So yeah, as you can see, not pointy pointy, but just enough so I can get in there. Okay, so I'm going to start with my darker tone down the bottom and move up to the lighter tone. So I'm just going to do in here. So you can apply it by using your paintbrush and applying it straight to your brush, which is what I do sometimes. Like I rub it on the nib or on, on the actual crayon, or you can apply it with the crayon. Uh, it just depends what mood I'm in. But if I'm blending, sometimes I prefer more to use applying straight to the paintbrush method um, because I find I can blend it a little bit easier. It, yeah, it just kind of depends. <laughs> um, but yeah, today I'll do it with applying it to the, straight to the book. Okay, so as I'm blending, I kind of pull it up in like little streaks so I can blend the next color into it. Um, and I try not to do all of it in one go. I might do two layers of the Neo 2s rather than trying to smash all the colour down onto the page um, all at once. I find if you put too much on and you don't use enough water, it doesn't activate properly and it can be a bit of a funny consistency on the page, which I don't like. So again, pulling it up so I can blend that lighter colour. But yeah, it's, it's not too tricky once you sort of get used to doing it. Um, it does take a bit of playing around. I guess it's like your um, ink tense pencils. I'm trying to do two things at once. I can't think and talk. It's like your ink tense. Like it takes a bit to sort of play around and get used to how it moves and how they blend and, you know, all that good stuff. Okay, so what I do now is I'll come in with my water and start blending. Um, I tend to start light to dark with these so I don't pull the dark too far into the light. Again, I make sure that I come sort of over the top a bit a couple of times to really activate the color. Otherwise it will sit, oops, sorry, not even on screen. It will sit on the book like a crayon. So yeah, you want to really make sure it's activated. Hunter, can you go in the other room, please? He's watching his tunes. All right. They're on school holidays while well, I'm on school holidays as well at the moment. I've had a hiatus off YouTube <laughs> for a while. Um, I just get so busy with school and everything else that we do it's just yeah finding time to even color sometimes is a pain all right so as we come down into this next color working it in blending it up making sure that you overlap each color too much water i keep a tissue with me if i do add a bit too much water i can just dab I guess like you know when you're watercolor painting I 
Now these are watercolour brushes. I just like that they hold that bit more water. Don't have to keep going and refilling every couple of seconds. And I don't like the water brushes. I know some people love them. I can't stand them. <laughs> uh, I feel like I don't have enough control over it. I guess that comes down to, again, practicing it, using it, getting to know how it works, all that good stuff, but I can't be bothered. Now, if you find that you haven't done enough and you can still see the white of the paper through, I would, yeah, go back in with a second layer. Um, I think because it is a smaller area, it doesn't look too bad. So I'm going to not do a second layer of Neo 2s and go in with my Neo 1s. If it's a larger area and you find, yeah, like I said, you know, the white's coming through or they're just not blending enough of how you would like it, I would go in with a second layer. But because it is a smaller area, I think it's blending a little bit better. While that dries, so I can show you the Neo ones on top, I will do the next section so you can see that. But it's pretty much how I do that part of it. I really like this book. It just is, <laughs> it sounds stupid because I've been coloring for a long time, but it can be overwhelming. Um, I find I have to really break it down into sections, which is why my one of my last videos in this mythic world, I just broke it up into like sky and land and um, the creature itself because it just, if I don't break it up like that, I guess it's my ADHD brain that's too overwhelming. So yeah, break it up, get it done. So I thought if I at least just, you know, background and then trees and then Bobby Yeager herself, it's more um, achievable. And I thought, why not do this request while I'm here? Okay. So I'll wait for that other one to dry and I'll do this one. So I hope everyone's been well. Um, like I said, been off for a little bit. I am on school holidays, so I'm trying to get another one, like a colour, watch me colour slash colour along done um, for the rock hoppers in Kirby's Fragile World. It is just taking forever though, um, because there is obviously a lot of rocks and things to do, so we will get there. Um, something I like about the Neo 2s and the 1s actually, it's the same, you can actually erase them. So if you go out of the lines like I've just done here, I can come back in with an eraser and it doesn't erase it like completely but enough to disguise it, which is nice. Sorry if you can hear my tummy, it is making all kinds of noises. Okay. So I think, um, no, we'll give it another minute. We'll do the next bit. I could just use my heat gun, but that means pulling it out and setting it all up. So you guys can just watch me do a little bit more of this instead. Yeah, so I've been working on a couple of images in Fragile World. I'm just really enjoying the simplicity of it, to be honest. Um, and because it is nature, I can look at example pictures on the net. I don't have to think of colors. I don't have to, you know, do all that kind of stuff. It's already there and I can just look at the reference pictures and and create, I guess, rather than stressing over what colors combos to use and, you know, all that good stuff. So yeah, it's been quite enjoyable just doing that book. I 
can't wait for his new one to come out next year. I'm very excited. I've pre-ordered it. Can't wait for that one. I love creepy alien-y stuff. So, or, you know, ghosts and paranormal stuff and all that good stuff. So I'm very excited for that. Should be good. Anyone else excited for that book or think it's not their cup of tea? Let me know. It's interesting to see um, everyone's different tastes in things. It's it's quite interesting. Okay, so my camera is going to die soon. So I'm going to come in with my Neo 2, Neo 1s now. Sorry, we're over the top. So basically I grab out the same colors that I'm using in my Neo 2s and they do match up if you have the cassettes of them. So I'm going to grab those three colors out. Okay, and basically all I'm doing, it is really, really simple. Same thing, I'm going to go back in over the top of the colors I've already done with their matching Neo 1. And I start off just by coming in lightly and I work in circles. And what it does, it just gets rid of any of the white spots and it just smooths it right out. And because it is a crayon, it gives it a bit of a shine too, which either love it or you hate it I know, I know people don't like it but I actually don't mind it it's got the wax bloom on there so anyway but yeah basically I'm just coming in on the top with those neo ones I like doing the circle work because it just gives it a nicer finish and it's nothing really Right? like there's nothing no really tricks to it it's just coming in it's hard to see with that reflection because the wax bloom but yeah it just makes it a little bit smoother as you're coming in with it on top there now you can blend them too which is where I love the um uh What's the word? Like flexibility of them, I guess. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm just holding it up because it's easier to see in that light. Okay. So I'm going to same thing. Start lifting my pencil, making it lighter as I'm coming down. Because it's going to help me blend the next color into it, if that makes sense. So going for my next color. And I'm going to start blending that up into the one I just did. Again, I'm just coming in nice and light to begin with. I can build that layer up. Don't have to come in heavy handed straight up. So coming in. And as you go, you can start to get heavier. Start to build that color. But I just find, yeah, coming in nice and light to start with and then building up seems to be the trick. Again, building your circle work. And this will give you nice vibrant colors too. Like I love my vibrant colors, as you guys know. So um, what I then do is to bend, blend it a little bit better. I come back in with that lighter color. Same as when I use my pencils. I'm sort of swapping between the pencils quite frequently when I'm blending. And you can see it starts to blend in those colors okay but yeah like I said there's not really any tricks I guess to it it's just a matter of building those layers and yeah kind of smoothing the color out now you don't have to go over it with the neo 2 obviously neo ones obviously um, I you can use pencil but I just prefer it because the colors are already matched. Like I don't have to go and search 
for colors that are matching. It's just, it's there. It's already matched for me. I'm not having to go and do that. Now the trees are going to be lighter as well. It looks really dark on camera, but it, it it's not that dark. So yeah, rather than coming back in with pencil, I come back in with the Neo ones because it's um yeah already matched for me, and they give me just as nice a blend and smoothness as the pencils. So yeah, nice and easy. Okay, come back in. It's a bit darker now. And blending it up into that lighter colour. It does look really dark on here. But it isn't even that... It's not that dark in real life. Anyway, it's more about showing you how I blend them anyway. So, so yeah, coming in... I haven't used purple in ages, so I'm really excited to do this as a purple tone sort of page. I actually um, decided to do that after watching um, Sarah Renee Clark's video where she did Kirby's um, panda all in the purple. So I'm not going to do all purple. Bubby Yeager will be different, but still with purple tones and things. So see how it turns out. Alright, where's my duster? There it is. Okay. So yeah, basically that's how I get that smooth, um, beautiful, glossy background with the Neo 2s and 1s. It looks really dark, but I promise you it's not that dark in real life. But anyway, um, yeah, that's it. That's all it is, basically. I hope you guys enjoyed that. I hope you, um, you can utilize it in your backgrounds to get that beautiful, smooth finish. And um, I'll talk to you next time. Bye.